everyone, and how are you? All right, Sunday, October 30th, 2022. All right, happy Halloween. Um, be safe out there, all right? Watch out for your friends if you're going to parties, okay? And be good to the kitties um, if they come around and give them some great candy, all right? Awesome. All right, so um, so this this week is a very applied week, and uh, so this uh, this weekly assignment we're going to talk about is all about financial planning, and is purposely integrated to complement the second paper that you have, the, the uh, critical thinking assignment number two, which is um, where you're going to be your own financial planner, and you're going to see what happens to your investments and how they grow. Uh, through this whole concept of compound interest and through recurrent um, annual contributions, all right? So we're gonna see how that works out when you do this the, uh, second critical thing assignment. I'll set out a separate separate video for that, all right, my friends? And uh, But this week, we're gonna do financial planning. Now, um, we've been building this house for the entire semester and you guys are doing great. And I, and I really have to, to applaud you for, for your accomplishment. And we set up this concept about aging, um, about some of the diseases of aging, okay, how to avoid it, and um, but also the out-of-pocket expenses and so you have to plan for those expenses. And that's what this retirement is all about, okay? Um, we also talk about expenses for caregiving. Again, this is what your um, retirement planning is all about. And then we went into the, kind of the, the, the kind of global economic scenario and really the sad state and we're going to reiterate that this week, that much of the world is, and really much of our country is, you know, it's it's the privileged few that are that are investing for their future. And so we're going to have to look at this sociologically down the line, with, you know, how we're going to deal with this, okay? All righty, my friends. So here it is, retirement planning, all right? And and this is, you know, you know we have a large percentage of Marshall School of Business majors, all right? So this is right in your wheelhouse, okay? But in reality, we all have to be financial planners, right? So you can hire a financial planner, um, but there is a certain amount of risk associated with that. First of all, they have large fees. So that money is just going to be gone because you're paying for their services. But secondarily, um, there are some bad apples out there, okay? And, um, and most recently was on the news, Cure Sedgwick, Kevin Bacon, uh, they took their millions and millions of dollars and they believed in the Ponzi scheme that is Bernie Madoff. And again, if it sounds too good to be true, it's because it is, okay? If somebody says, hey, you know, the, the, the current market is giving a return on your investment of 6%, 7 maybe even 8 but I can guarantee you 15%, you need to really walk away, okay? Go research this, okay? Because the reality is, um, when you really sit down with the um, economists, that's just not how it works, okay? Um, this is an easy thing to do, all right? We all have to do it, all right? We all have to plan for our future. Um, money is what makes the world turn. And, uh, and uh, you know, in order to have a quality of life that you really, really have, have goals set up for, you're going to have to... Um, you know, have a good job. And then um, on top of that, you're going to have to invest for those days when you retire. All right. And uh, so we all need to learn how to do this. You know, I, I'm a neuroscientist, you know, um, uh, your co-instructor, my wife, Julia, she's, uh, she's an attorney. Okay. Um, but we do our own financial planning. Okay. And, uh, and that way, I don't have to worry that somebody is going to not be doing things that are in my best financial interest, you know, like a Bernie Madoff, okay? Um, that way, I don't have to worry about the fiduciary that, that you know, this person, is this person, um, you know, doing things legally or not, on and on and on. We're doing it on our own, okay? And we don't pay fees, okay? Minimal fees just for the use of the program, and that's it. So that could be thousands and thousands of dollars annually that we don't pay. All right, so this is something to really think about, and you can do it. You know, if you're going to make a ton of money, you really need to, it's like playing a video game, my friends, you know, and uh, you just get in there and you learn it, and next thing you know, you're, you're really good at it. And that's, it's just click and, and search and click and search and, you know, and apply, and, and it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's no different. So there's nothing to be afraid of. That being said, a lot of you are going to become financial planners for people that are afraid of this kind of stuff, okay? All right. So these are the first steps that you need to take, all right? Um, 
we're going to go over thing, everything here um, step by step in terms of the curriculum of uh, Blackboard. Uh, but we also have an article that you can look at that is really cool, okay? And it sets the stage in terms of, uh, you know, what you need to do for retirement planning in the year 2022, okay? Um, do you understand, okay, whether you become that financial planner or you're doing it on your own, that the federal government is changing the, the um, amount, the maximal amount that you can invest every year for your retirement, and it routinely changes it every year, raises the amount because they're trying to incentivize all of us to plan for our own future so that we're not reliant on the government. All right. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Remember before we looked in weeks gone by about a lot of countries um, that were burdened financially by this guaranteed salary that they're giving to all their employees, okay? That was that defined benefit, okay? It's kind of like what we give our firefighters, okay? It's what we give our police officers, it's what we give members of Congress, the president, okay? City employees, water workers, all these different government jobs, they have a defined benefit that is paid mostly by your tax dollars, okay? So this has become a drain on the economy. And we saw countries like Belgium and Italy and Portugal and France that made that mistake because people live longer. So, so what we wanna do, you know, what our country wants to do is, hey, guess what? You're on your own, so um, we're gonna incentivize it. And that's what this is all about right here. All right, so this kind of goes over that, okay? Again, life expectancy is longer. You've kind of learned this from, from this course, okay? And with longer life expectancy comes longer expenses, okay? And if you retire at age 62 and you live to your 95, all right, so you better have 33 years worth of income that you can draw off of, 33 years worth of investment portfolio that you can draw off of. That's what this is all about. And remember, we have things like um, out-of-pocket expenses for unexpected healthcare crises, all right? We have out-of-pocket expenses, okay, for unexpected caregiving fees, okay, on and on and on. So you kind of have to budget all that. All right, so that's what this first part of this article is all about. All right, so if you want to do certain things in life, if you have goals in life, all right, you set it into motion. And this is a really cool video by this kind of life planner slash financial planner. And she goes into the steps you take in terms of just setting up a table, a grid of this is where I want to be and this is how I'm going to do it, okay? All right, and part of that is, you know, in terms of setting everything up, you got to come up with budgets, okay? So how much do I need to retire, okay? So right now you can budget, how do I put things into motion so that I can buy my first house, for example, all right? Well, you know what? Don't be buying $100 bottles of wine. That's how you do it, okay? Um, you know, you tighten your belt, you, you invest, okay? Get that return investment, and then you can buy a house. You know, you, you, you kind of, I never forget, during the recession of 2008, uh, looking at a billboard when I was in the west side, and it was a big, giant billboard, and what it said, it said, act your wage, W-A-G-E, and that's what you need to do, okay? All righty, so... Um, so you're going to set this all into motion and I'm not going to read this for you. Okay. But it just kind of highlights, um, cost of living. And then here it is. This is part of the table, your budget, you know, what is the cost of rent, mortgage, insurance, on and on and on and on healthcare costs. You kind of project that. Okay. And, and then you, you look at national averages, you know, do, and, and then you ask yourself, for example, sadly, you know, what, what is the healthcare family history in your family? What is the lineage? Okay. So we have a real bad issue in my family with um, osteoarthritis and joint issues. And guess what comes with that? A lot of joint surgeries. So you got a budget for that. You know? Julie's uh, family, we heard all about it. They have um, genes that make them super, super vulnerable to cancers. All right. So there's a budget for that. All right. So you, you just kind of have to think about all these kind of things. All right. Travel expenses. OK. Entertainment. You know, all these. You budget everything. All right. And that's what this second video is all about down here, is setting you up how to make a budget, all right? And when you're going to sit down, for example, let's say, let's say you're a financial planner and you sit down with a couple who's 42 years of age and they are baffled by this, all right? So, all right, so you're going to sit down with them and say, okay, we're going to set up a budget, all right? 
and uh, so you're their financial counselor, okay? You're their money manager, and you're gonna you're gonna set up a budget for them to do their investing for the retirement accounts that we're talking about, maybe some investing for housing, on and on and on and on. Okay, so you got to create a budget, and that's what that's all about, right there. Okay, this kind of is a chart that describes the differences in the different types of retirement accounts. There's there's many different kind of hybrid models. Okay. We're just gonna we're gonna do in this class the IRA, the Roth IRA, and the 401k. Okay, and within that 401k concept, we kind of blend it in because it's the same rules for nonprofits. Okay, for also a government employee who wants something beyond their pension that they're gonna get. Okay, so there's different different um, um, uh, tool, tools for investing that, that are under this same category right here. And we'll see this later on. All right, all right. So big difference. Okay, the IRA. Okay is um, you um, take that money away, okay, and there's an annual limit, you see there, $6,000. That changes every single year. Like I said, the government changes this, trying to incentivize it. Right now, it's $6,000 in year 2022, and you take it out, and then that drops your taxable income. And sometimes that'll change your tax bracket, okay? Um, you know, we can just kind of look right here, and we'll say um, 22 tax brackets. All right, and so we see right here, uh, depending on your income, if you don't make a lot of money, only 10% of your income is um, uh, has uh, is taxed. Okay, I mean, so your 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 tax rate is 10% of what you bring in. Sorry, I didn't get that right. If you make a lot of money, then you can get up into 37% of what you bring in. It's kind of mind-boggling. I understand that. We'll be taxed by the federal government. All right, so. Um, so uh, why not lower your income to set you into a tax bracket? And so I could lower my income through investing and take me from the 22 to the 12% and suddenly I'm paying far less taxes. That's why you do something like that, okay? That's the IRA, or you know, lower your tax bracket. And then it, it goes and it churns and it makes all kinds of money, okay? So your investments are good, the return is great. And at the end of the, and you can see how to see this when we do our, um, our uh, um, second writing assignment, the critical thinking assignment. Um, and then when you start spending it, when you're 67, 75, whatever it is, then you pay taxes on it. And however much money you spend that year, so you withdraw from that IRA account, um, all your different retirement accounts, uh, the government is made aware of it, okay? And they will tax you. But you know what? Um, there's a good chance that the money you're pulling out when you're 70 is not going to be... Um, at, at, uh, at as high a level as you might think, all right? So it's, so it's, you're going to hedging your bets that, um, that it's, there's going to be a tax advantage to that. All right, um, here's the Roth IRA, all right? So this one is different, okay? So you get taxed, okay? So you're in that 10% tax rate, okay? So you make, you know, $40,000 a year, and 10% of it is, um, is sent off to the federal government, all right? So you send off, you know, four grand goes to the government, Bummer, okay? Um, uh, and then re the remaining money that you have, if you've paid your taxes, then you invest it, okay? And uh, however, as it grows, okay, and you get, you're gonna, you're gonna watch this compounding, it's gonna get bigger and bigger, okay? You can have a year where, oh my God, I made 15% on my money, whatever. It just grows and grows and grows. And then when you spend it, when you're 65 years of age, um, you don't get taxed on it. So that's the big advantage of that. So it's good to invest this when you're not making a lot of money, okay? 401k, okay, different strategy, different limits, okay? This is a, a, a set up through the government. And, um, as it's a, a large employers will set this up for you, okay? And um, there are different limits, as you can see right here, okay? So this right here is, you see, um, this is, you know, right now until I'm 50, okay? I'm already blown past that, so now I can invest this amount of money so the government has incentivized it. You don't get a big bump between these two, a bigger bump here, and they're trying to get me to invest more in my own retirement, okay? All right, so that's that's what happens um, when you get past age 50. And then the other big difference is I can get employee matching, employer matching, which you see down here, all right? Okay, we'll go through that again in more detail, all righty. So, Here's the big thing that you need to understand, okay? Compound interest, okay? So if you, um, for example, okay, you invest, um, let's just say I'm gonna invest a $1,000, so I'm gonna take um, $1,000, okay? There it is, $1,000, okay? And let's say um, 
I get um, a, a good year and I get, as you can see right there, I get a 10% of my return, okay? And, oh, I did it wrong here, all right? So it, it didn't, let's see, $1,000, all right, times, um, whoa, sorry, my calculator's messing up here. What I need to do is just stop this, okay? I'm gonna go back in here, all right? There it is, okay? So I got 10%, now I have, boom, you see I have $1,100 at the end of the year. Well, that's awesome, okay? All right, I'm just, now I'm not gonna invest any more money, okay? And so I'm just gonna let it go roll for the next year and let's see what happens if I do it again. Look at that. I made $110 by looking the other way by another year. Oh, let's do it a third year. Now, by year three, it's 300. How about a fourth year? And you can see what's happening. It just keeps growing and growing. That's called compounding, all right? Now, if you keep putting more, let's say I put a thousand bucks in a year, you can see how, in addition to how it's rolling over, you can see how it's gonna grow. So that's the, con the, the key is compound interest, okay? All right, so these are description. This is a traditional IRA. They explain it right in there with its limits. A Roth IRA, that was the one I was telling you about earlier that you put into motion when you're when you're young and you're not making any money, okay? These are more complicated, all right? A simple IRA that has an employer match part. We're not gonna get into that. Here's a 401k, all right? Um, that uh, oftentimes companies will do, which is awesome. Um, and then these are hybrids right in here, all right? All right, so, so just read through this. It's really, really cool. It's kind of a nice overview and then Grab hold of the meat and potatoes right here of the class, all right? Going back here, okay? So again, this is, um, so we encourage you, watch the videos right there. And this is right here, like I said, this is the wheelhouse of our Marshall School majors, okay? We're getting, what we were focusing in is IRAs, Roth IRAs, and 401ks, okay? Um, this learning module, okay? Is complemented by our second writing assignment, which is critical thinking assignment two, okay? where you're gonna set up your own investment strategy. You're gonna have two calculators. One's gonna be a investment calculator that is like a, a, a um, basically an IRA calculator. And then the other one is going to be the 401k, okay? And you're gonna see um, uh, how much money can be made by um, using those uh, future retirement strategies, those retirement investment strategies, okay? So now we come back here, this kind of reminds us what we did last week, okay? And we call this kind of shock and awe. And it is kind of, you know, sad. When we look at, um, in America right here, so one, in, one third of Americans have zero retirement, okay? Um, and uh, we see right here, 23% uh, have less than 10. So now we are, we're looking at, you know, almost, um, we are looking at um, basically 55% has less than $10,000 saved, okay? And you can see that it's a very small number of, of people that are in this, this category here that have more saved. Again, 300K is nothing, okay? That's something I would burn through in a year, okay? All right, cool. So you need more than that. Women, okay, are less prepared than men, okay? And this is, you know, this is highlighted in here. You know, why is this? You know, uh, there are a number of reasons. First of all, there is a, you know, a, a sex-based difference in terms of what people earn for the same job that you know that, that we're trying to remedy as a society. And then the other thing is women are more likely to have to take breaks in their careers if they have children, okay? It is what it is, okay? And so we can see this big difference, okay? And in terms of um, men versus women, you see there's an 8% increase of uh, women that have, have zero retirement accounts, okay? Which is kind of really, really sad. We see, um, you know, again, you just start adding these lower numbers and you see women to men, you know, women are doing um, um, you know, far less well than men are in terms of retirement accounts, okay? We can now look, again, uh, this kind of reiterates last week, um, generational trends, okay? And I find this, you know, kind of the scariest, okay? So we, you know, we set this up right here and we set the stage over here and we start looking at people, you know, again, these are people um, that are boomers and seniors, okay? You know, you're, um, this would be 55 plus would be the, you know, the lower limit, okay? And we see that almost 30% have nothing, okay? Nothing to, and they're 100% reliant on social security. Um, you start adding all these numbers up here 
you know, in like, and it says, you know, 8% have, you know, maybe 20 grand saved, okay, all right? You know, 17% have less than 10 grand saved. So let's say you're that, you know, 20 grand. Saved. So we're getting like 60% of the population at best as that amount, okay? We can see that this is just, you know, um, a recipe for disaster. And the next generation, you can see right here, not much better, okay? And then we see the millennials are lagging behind even further in terms of their their um, retirement accounts, okay? So, you know, this is something that, that, that we're going to have to, you know, deal with as a society. All right. So we see these sad people in this orange category. They have no retirement income, income and we saw a couple examples of that in the last discussion. So what are they going to do? Okay, so they're relying 100% on Social Security, okay? And... Um, what you have to understand um, is that um, the the average Social Security benefit in 2022 was about 1,600 a month. That's that's a little bit less than um, $20,000 a year. So it's 1988. That's on average, okay. Um, and you know, the, again, this is this is a uh, um, um, the um, Social Security benefit is based on how much money you've earned, okay. And you see, the more on a, you you top out here. But if, you know, if this has been your past average earnings over the last uh, over the last 10 years, okay, you see that um, that uh, you, you know this is how much Social Security you get, okay. So if you've been making this kind of money and got used to this kind of income, you retire and you don't have any retirement savings, and this is what you're left with. You see that you're in a world of hurt, okay. All right. All right. So then. Um, uh, when we go through this right here, um, we, we start talking about, um, again, again, the Social Security issue, right? So, you know, our, our assignment, okay, in, in this particular module is, is getting you to think beyond Social Security, okay? And, um, and, and to start thinking about retirement, and that's why we kind of blend this, integrate it with that second critical thinking assignment what kind of retirement accounts are you going to set up and why they benefit, right? We come over here, there's another incentive that the government puts out there. They, the government says, you know what, if, if you delay your retirement like I'm going to do, all right, so I'm going to work till I'm past 70, okay, um, then um, they, they will increase my Social Security uh, uh, benefit above the amount that is set for the traditional retirement of 66.66 years of age, okay? So um, it'll be 32% greater. How awesome is that, all right? So that's, that's a big deal. So again, we can look at an example right here, all right? So if somebody um, had a lower income level, level so they don't have this gigantic um, uh, Social Security. This is, you know, the maximum right here. So this is the maximum. So I've been, you know, made a lot of money. And um, so I can, I can, you know, at, at my maximum make, almost $4,200 a month at age 70, 50 grand a year at age 70, okay, by delaying it, okay? Um, we see this person, they didn't make as much money, okay? So if they would have, if, if they were to do an early retirement, age 62, you get punished, you get penalized. So you get 32% um, less than what you would have gotten here at, at age 67, okay? If you delay it to 70, then boom, you get this big bump, okay? So this is, you know, the difference between um, uh, retiring at 62 and, and retiring at 70 for this person. Uh, so they're going to get an extra uh, thousand bucks a month just by delaying their retirement. So that's a huge incentive. All right. So when we look at the retirement plans, okay, I talked about the IRAs. I talked about the Roth IRAs. This is the 401k, the 403b. Okay. So this, the 401k is, again, this is a retirement company set up by a typical private company. All right, the 403B is um, a nonprofit, okay? Um, and, you know, like like a university, believe it or not, we're a nonprofit. Or, and, and then we have the government um, agencies, um, you know, so you, um, so you work for the police department. You can also have a separate, separate from the pension, a 401k plan with them, okay? Not a 401k, a, sorry, a 457B. That's what they're all about, okay? They have the same rules and guidelines, all right? So, um, again, you are going to pull, this is, this is uh, pre-tax, okay? So you pull the money out, lowers your tax bracket, you investment, and you pay taxes on it later on in life when uh, you access it, okay? 
The unique thing is that it can be a company match, okay? Um, a lot of companies have a one for one. They will limit it, okay, in terms of what percentage of your income you can put in, okay? So there's gonna be a limit. And then there's the, remember, the dollar amount limit that the government, the government puts out. Um, so at USC, I can, um, my maximum I can put in for, for match is I can put in 5% of my nine month salary. That's the way it works for a university, okay? Um, my, only, my guaranteed salary is only for the nine months and then I have to get grants or other type of income to pay for the, the summer month. That's the way the um, university system works up. USC is only gonna um, let me put away 5% of my nine month income However, they have a match, okay? So the match is two to one for that 5%. So an additional 10% of nine nine months will be put in by USC. So that's a huge thing, okay? All righty. And then it churns. And what this is, the tax savings is all about, is not, unless I have nothing but great years of investing for 40 years, I don't pay a penny in terms of dividends, in terms of the return on the investment, how much that, 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 um, that money has grown until I start spending it, all right? So that's what that's all about right there. All right, here's the Roth IRAs and the IRAs, okay? So like I said, the traditional, traditional individual retirement account, okay? Um, so you get a tax break on the very front end. So, you know, like I said, I'm gonna reduce my taxable income. I made 50 grand this year, okay? Um, and, um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take six grand of that and invest it. So the government looks at me and says, okay, you put that in, you'll pay taxes on that later, okay, um, when you retire. And so my taxable income was reduced from 50 grand to 44 grand, all right? So, um, and that can change your tax bracket, like I said. Or um, you could do the, the, um, the tax break later, where especially if you're not making a lot of money right now, which is the key, you know, because you guys are all gonna be in a lower tax bracket when you first get, get, get jobs, then, um, you take the money you earned from, from this uh, 2022, you've already been taxed on it, okay? This money is kind of set aside, and then you invest that, and you put it into what's called the Roth IRA, okay? And then it grows, 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 and the difference is when you access it later on in life, you don't pay a penny in terms of taxes, all right? So that's what that's all about. So there are contribution limits, okay? So we're gonna reiterate that, okay? Um, so, um, when we look at the 401k right here, okay, um, this is the, um, the annual contribution limit until age 50. Uh, there's an additional 6,500, it's called the catch-up contribution. Again, the government's incentivized it. So that puts me to $27,000 I can put into my retirement account when I am over the age of 50 years of age. And then, um, like I said, USC can match it. So all when it's all told, the maximum amount that can be put together between um, this and the employer match, because I mean, who knows, maybe you get a three for one, whatever it is, okay, would be um, $61,000 a year, all right? All right, and um, so then we look at the IRA, okay? Whole different ball game down here. So whether we're looking at the IRA or the Roth IRA, and again, this is a whole different category I'm not even gonna get into, okay? Um, and, uh, but between these two, um, the annual limit is 6,000 under age 50, and then the catch up puts you at 7,000, right? So far less, far less than we have in terms of the 401k, all right? All right, so this is what compounding does. This is what I was doing kind of like clumsily with my computer. But again, I'm gonna invest $10,000, <clears> and um, I'm just gonna just let it earn 5% interest, all right? And that's pretty low, okay? Uh, that's what, you know, you know, I would expect to earn maybe 7 or 8% interest annually. Yes, this last year sucks, but you know what, it just can, the stock market always rises, okay? Don't worry about that, all right? And, um, and so if you just let it sit in there because of compounding, each year that money uh, will reinvest and get that 5% interest and reinvest and get that 5% interest. And then lo and behold, you know, so 30 years later, that $10,000 that you looked the other way on is now worth 40,000, okay? So if you keep putting in 10 every year, on and on and on, you can see how this compounding is gonna get enormous and grow. All right, so this is the other type of plan. So these are all my defined contribution plans, all right? The IRA, the Roth IRA, and the, um, and the 401k or the other ones, the 403b that we were talking about. 
uh, defined benefit. This is just um, um, you know what we give our government workers. Okay, so so this is often we used to be referred to as my pension. Okay, um, and so this defined benefit pension plan is a, is a percentage of what your income is during let's say the last last five years, the last three years that you worked. You know, uh, a lot of uh, government agencies will set it to ninety percent of what you earned. Um, and so that's that's a big amount of money that the government then has to guarantee paying all of its employees. OK, uh, this is called an annuity. OK, we're not going to spend a lot of time of it, but it's a it's a kind of a conservative approach. What the annuity is, is you give your money to an insurance company. The insurance company then will guarantee you an annual um, uh, return. And so they will guarantee you an annual amount of money that you're going to be able to take out from that annuity. And um, but that return that they so it'll be part of the principal and part of the part of the amount of money it makes. But but the insurance company is only doing this to make a lot of money. And so they're reinvesting your money and any type of um, earnings that they get beyond what they guaranteed you goes into their pocket. OK, there's tons of fees for this. Um, and so uh, you got to be very careful. So I would, you know, read this article about the, it's called annuities, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, you'll find that financial planners um, and money managers will, will just upsell you, upsell you and upsell you on these because they make so much money from doing this. All right. Back in the day, it used to be crazy that they would sign people up for these annuities. Um, and then if you died, they took the entire amount of money and pocketed it. Now there are um, different strategies on these annuities where the, you know, the beneficiary, the, the children will get some of the money back to. You got to be careful. You just got to be careful with the annuity. But it is conservative. And if you don't like the stock market, then it is, it is a way to ensure you're going to have uh, the same income annually for the rest of your life. Okay. Now, the other thing that we can do, let's say you, you've got more money. I don't, you know, I've already exceeded my limit in terms of my IRA and my Roth IRA. I can't, I can't invest anymore, but I want to invest more. So you can just go ahead and just, you know, set up a brokerage, set up a Fidelity account and start throwing money in it and playing like you're a stock trader. Okay. And you do these mutual funds and index funds. Okay. They're large bundles. Okay. You don't individually have to like buy individual Apple stock. You can just buy these index funds or mutual funds that is an aggregate of a category so uh s p 500 for example okay the dow jones industrial index these are just categories of 100 s p 500 uh is a um is like these big giant companies like ford okay gm okay and then we have nasdaq that is more tech based okay but there are thousands of companies so any one company is not going to sway um, how well your your investment's doing. That's the difference between just buying individual stock and having a company just go belly up and losing everything. All right, all right. Anybody can do this. Okay. If you set up this brokerage account, and this is just a little bit of a description of what brokerage accounts are all about. Um, you have to pay on the gain made that year. All right. It is what it is. Capital gains tax. Tax. Okay. And this right here is a a list of the taxation rate. So um, if you made 500 grand off an investment, you're going to pay 20% of that to the government that year. But you know what? Who cares? <laughs> you made 500 grand off the million that you invested. So you pay, you know, you pay a little taxes on that, right? And you can see that the the, the lower the gains, the low, um, the lower the taxes. And that's what this is all about. And they divvy it up based on you're married and, and single and all that kind of stuff. All right. That's what capital gains are all about. All right. Now, I've, you know, I've been telling you guys all through this that you can do this on your own, okay? So we come down here, and this is just a table looking at some of the fees that you will pay, okay? And these are all different categories of investments that you might do if you set up your Fidelity account, your Vanguard account, or whatever, all right? Um, and so we can see the fees that might be charged. These are just examples of these different types of investment strategies. Um, these are bonds, okay, commodities, okay, all funds, they aggregated it, okay, on average, okay, so you're paying um, much more fees for the actively managed funds by this person that you hired versus you doing it on your own, okay, versus the index funds that you're doing it, looking at right here. So this is right here is, a, is um, the, um, 
the cost that could happen to you uh, based on fees, okay? And in having 2% fees is, is pretty common, okay? And so um, looking at uh, the, the amount of, uh, if there was no fees, this would be the value of your account, whatever you invested over 30 years of you know, almost 600 grand, okay? Um, if we look at uh, this money manager, you've paid out almost 200 grand to them and you've lost almost 200 grand. That's what it shows right here for them to do what you could be easily, easily be doing on your own. And again, this is showing the fee structure. So this is how, you know, 0.25% fees, 1% fees. Still, that's, you know, that's, you know, uh, one, you know, almost one fifth of the value of the account went away in fees. So that's something to think about, okay, over a lifetime. All right, cool. All right, guys, so, um, so you've heard about this, okay? And so what we do here now, and, and you know, hopefully you have a, a grasp of this. You, it, this is something you really need to throw yourself into. I'm telling you right now, it's super, super important, okay? And learn as much as you can about financial planning um, and strategizing for your own future and help your parents and, and your grandparents and all that too. Um, help your friends, okay? Let's say one of you, you know, gets a contract with the LA Rams, okay? And you're making, I don't know, 20 million a year, you know? You know, do you want to put um, a, a big majority of your investments in the hands of somebody else, or do you want to do it on your own? All right, it's you can easily do this on your own. Is what I'm trying to tell you. All right, so this right here, the discussion is just kind of more of that shock and awe. So this this was, you know, um, it was it's kind of a reflection of what we are showing up here in terms of how many people don't have anything right here. Okay, and if we hone that down um, and we look. And this study, which was a few years back, was published in 2017. Um, and we're looking at the median, okay, the median retirement savings, okay, um, based on age group. And it was, you know, pretty um, pretty scary, pretty scary right here. So it's 2007. This was, you know, before the Great Recession. And you see right here um, um, in 2013, the median for this age group was 17,000, okay. Median, that's when you, that means you line up 100 people and... Um, you know, uh, uh, 50 to 100 have more than 17,000 invested, but 50 to zero, okay, have 17,000 or less, and we know 30% have none. So this is, you know, really scary when you think about how much it costs to live, okay? So, um, so what we want we, we do is um, um, we want you to consider all this, okay, in your discussion, okay, and think about what we can do, okay? To, um, to correct this big gap that exists across society in terms of retirement, okay? How, what can we do to fix this, okay? I want you to think about um, all this and, and discuss that in your discussion. All right, guys? Cool. All right, so we'll be uh, coming out with the, uh, the plan, okay, on how to do CT2, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a, a real brief uh, look-see here at CT2. And what is fun, there's a slide deck with this, okay? And um, what's cool about CT2 is you're going to, you're going to, it's going to blow your minds how much money you were going to, to make, okay? So there, here it is right here, okay? And this, this is kind of this walkthrough in terms of what you do. It tells, tells you you use two different strategies. One is for the IRA and then one is for a 401k. We elected to just use this investment calculator. To set up the IRA, remember, as indicated right here, there's an annual limit of $6,000 a year that you can put in for the IRA. That's, 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 that's written in stone. And look up the annual limits. It's at the bottom of the 401k calculator for the 401k. All right. So you'll set it up two different strategies, meaning, um, uh, you know, how much you invest in case scenario one and how much you invest in sorry, scenario two. Okay. Here it is right here, kind of all laid out. Um, and... Uh, and so th these are the kind of uh, graphics that you're going to get, and um, and yeah, so, and and here's the um, this um, Washington Post article uh, made it right here, okay, um, about you know where you you think about your investment versus the the sad investment that most of our country has in, okay. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that, and uh, peace, happy Halloween, and uh, hopefully uh, you have a safe one and a fun one.